Hi there, my name is Tyler and today I'm going to show you my Almost Heaven Sutton Indoor Sauna Kit. i show you all the features and some install tips to help you get started on your personal in-home sauna. The first thing I'm going to talk about is the dimensions of this sauna to try to help you decide if this will fit in your living space. The first thing you should know is this is a two-person sauna as indicated on the website. Uh, I actually believe that two people will comfortably fit inside. Um, as is usual with their website, you can usually subtract one or two to get a more comfortable number. So one person will very comfortably fit in here and I've had my girlfriend in here and we both fit with room to spare for each of us and we're not packed together. Um, the outside dimensions are 57 inches uh, along the back wall and 57 inches the same way on that side wall. Then these walls, this one, that one, and this front wall are all about 33 and a half inches. The door opening is a little bit smaller than that. They come with a glass door that is magnetized to the frame and is very nice it's very heavy uh, the hinges are actually quite strong too so I've not had a single issue with that but that's something you should be aware of I believe you can get a solid wood door but I might be wrong on that so don't hold me to that but they do come by default they come with a glass door and honestly I quite like it. Let's go over a few things on the outside of this sauna. The first thing I'd like to talk about is the supplier that I used threw in a free Almost Heaven accessory kit. Uh, it includes a small drink shelf, a, uh, a towel rack or holder or a robe holder. And then they have two of these, which I have tucked in here, two of these uh, backrests. And one is smaller than the other, but you can use them and lean them up against the wall and use them for your back. Or uh, I've actually found out it's quite comfortable to lay them down on the bench and turn sideways and kind of prop your... Uh, prop them up underneath your legs and it'll elevate your feet and it, it honestly is quite comfortable you have to try it um, all that stuff and then there's a couple other things that I did not use with that kit um, I can't remember even what they are I ended up throwing them out I think there was a magazine holder and uh, something else but that kit was thrown in for free and I do use these things that I've showed you if you're like me and you want to put this in your basement or your garage, uh, you should know that the exterior height is, I believe, 78 inches or 79 inches. This is an older house built in the 1970s. It has a seven foot ceiling. Technically, it measures uh, 85 inches to the joist. So there is some empty space up above, but I essentially framed out and drywalled in this space uh, for this sauna and then tucked it in so that you can see here, the edge of the wall lines up pretty well with the edge of the sauna and the door clears that. So it, it helps hide the sauna away and not consume so much of this room. This was a unique situation to my own basement, uh, but just know that as long as you have a 57 by 57 square somewhere in your basement or garage and you have a seven foot ceiling, you will be able to fit this in uh, into that living space. Let's go ahead and go over the electrical. Uh, as it turns out, I am an electrician, so for me, this was just a material cost. Um, I couldn't tell you how much it would cost you to pay a, a, a real electrician to come to your house and do this, uh, but just from my time on Reddit and, and various YouTube videos, 
I've heard numbers from 500 to $2,000, but I mean, this type of stuff is completely dependent on where your panel is and how far away you are and uh, various other factors. But for me, uh, materials only, I was only in a, a couple hundred bucks and probably maybe three hours on a Saturday just to run it through the rafters. So for me, I just ran an 8.3 Romex. Uh, yes, I said 8.3. And I ran it through my joy space all the way over. Uh, I put it into a conduit here, ran it down my wall into a box. And then from here, I uh, converted over to seal tight. And then I punched the hole through and uh, fastened it in on the back side of the heater on the other side of this wall. And uh, the 8.3 is not required for the heater I have. However, I just ran the neutral wire because in case someday I decide to convert to something with a, a Wi-Fi capability or maybe it has a, a screen or, or a timer or something or a display, uh, that wire is available. So right now, it's just coiled up inside this box. Um, if you're using the Harvia 4.5 or 6 kilowatt heater that you can choose from on this website, you only need an 8.2. You don't need a neutral wire uh, for this heater. Um, in fact, the 4.5 kilowatt heater, you could use a 10. So you could use a 10.2. Um, but again, if you don't know what you're doing, you better leave it to an electrician. And there's some other nuances that are factored into that. So don't just take what I said and apply it to your situation. But in general, a 10-2 for the 4.5. And, and you might be able to do a 10 for the 6 kilowatt. But I went ahead and did the number 8 wire just to be on the safe side. Uh, and the extra cost for me wasn't that much just to have that peace of mind. Uh, and not burn my house down. So uh, that's how that works. Now the part you guys actually want to see. Let's go ahead and step on the inside of the sauna here. Um, the first thing you're going to notice is, is that it's illuminated underneath the bench. Now uh, you get a lighting kit with this two-person sauna kit and you lift this bench up and this just flips up and it'll rest like that and then you can access under here if you need to clean uh, and then also to turn this light on this light is a heat proof I know that's not the right term but it, it's built for this sauna uh, it has a it's hard to see but it has a dimmer so I can make it brighter or dimmer and it can get quite dim and quite bright. I have it somewhere in the middle. Um, I, I don't usually like sitting in a really bright sauna. So, um, and, and then all this is here is just a shroud so that you can't see that light. And it, you know what I mean? It's not, it's not gonna shine into your eyes at any point. It's more of an ambient lighting, which I really like. Uh, and to install that, all I did is I punched out a small uh, a half inch or five eighths or whatever that is punch that hole out and ran the wire in and then all that does is that uh, plugs into your outlet so it's kind of ghetto I guess I mean it would be nicer to have a light switch mounted here and I certainly could do that but I'm fine with this so um, so yeah when you get in you just gotta push the on off button um, if you want and then flip that back down push it into place we got our water here and our ladle um, this is quite nice it doesn't feel cheap by any means seems like a pretty pretty standard sauna uh, bucket and ladle and down here we have the lower bench 
and the lower bench is kind of small just because of the dimensions of this unit. Um, and this is as far as it will slide out because it'll hit this corner here and it won't come out any further. But the instructions tell you that you can fix it in place with screws or uh, if you leave it the way it is, you can slide it. So it's a little bit of a pain, but you can slide it back and forth if you need to. So uh, for cleaning or whatever. All right, let's go ahead and talk about this heater. I got the six kilowatt Harvia heater. Uh, you have to pay extra for that option. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you if you're like me and you really like the hardcore uh, high heat experience, then you need to pony up for this because if you get the four and a half and you don't like it, it's gonna cost you more in the long run to buy the four and a half install it and then uninstall it and then buy the six and then reinstall it so just pay the extra money up front even if you got to save another month or two or, or six or whatever just get the bigger unit trust me you're going to be happy that being said i've heard plenty uh of people saying the four and a half works fine it just takes longer to get the room up to temp and it doesn't quite peak out as high but it's still plenty hot. It's obviously designed for this space. So, uh, and on that topic, I can get this room to, uh, as indicated by this thermometer mounted about six inches off the ceiling, uh, I can get it up to right here, which is 200 degrees in freedom units or about 95 celsius if you're from canada or somewhere else uh, and that's at about 15 10 to 15 percent relative humidity and it'll spike up to about 20 when you start throwing water and it'll get brutally hot i mean it, it, it's a torture chamber so as far as mounting the thermostat I tried it at the original height that the instructions said, which was, I want to say 12 inches off the ceiling. I can't remember, but it was right here. And then I found that it was hot, but it wasn't quite hot enough. So over the course of a couple days, I moved it once and then I moved it again uh, lower. And I'm fine with that. I locked it in. I put this wood trim to cover the uh, the wire, which it comes out down here, and it goes into the heater and tells it when to shut off. Uh, I don't have a measurement for this, but I can tell you that I am five foot eleven, and this is at my shoulder height, whereas originally it was probably forehead height or maybe a little bit above that. So I think this is good. I also read a lot of people do this, but maybe try it out and see for yourself because uh, it may end up being too hot. Now, if it does end up getting too hot and you don't want to move that, there is a controller down here that allows you to change the temperature or a thermostat, I guess you would call it. And I keep mine maxed out because I actually like it right there. And um, if I'm ever wanting a little bit lower heat, I can just turn it down if I want. The, uh, the other dial is your on off switch. I'm sorry if I'm sounding funny, I gotta kneel down. Right now it's off and then it has numbers so that you can set a delayed on uh, function up to eight hours into the future. Uh, and I've used that a couple times, but most of the time uh, I just turn it on and then I come back in in about an hour. So that's how long it takes. It takes about 45 minutes to an hour to get it up to full temp. So I'll do a workout or I'll go cut the grass or whatever and then I'll get in and it's hot and ready. 
The way the instructions tell you to operate this is you turn it until you hear a click to turn on and a click to turn back off and then you rotate it back until you hear it click again slower. I'm going to show you how that works. Ready? On. Off. And then back the other way. On. And then you leave it. So now that's a full 60 minute run time. And if you listen, you can kind of hear the, the expanding of the heating element in there as it's starting to heat up. I'm going to turn it off. The last thing I want to go through is just some general construction advice for this unit. Uh, first of all, take note that they don't give you an intake uh, and I believe it's because the wood kit can't come with it pre-cut because they don't know where you're going to decide to put your heater. So once you pick your heater location, you're going to have to drill some holes underneath it to allow air to come in and allow that heater to warm the air and exhaust it out the top. So these holes here... I punch these out with a hole saw. They're right below the heater, and that seems to work just fine. It never overheats. Uh, it doesn't trip out. There's no draft. It just it works. So, and then on the back side under the bench, under the lower bench, is the exhaust, which I have fully open all the time. The photos on the website make it look like the exhaust is up here. And I thought it was because it, you can see it in the photos and it shows it in the drawings that you can get from Almost Heaven that it's up top. But that's not the case. And no, you can't rotate that panel to move it to the top because it's tongue and groove and then it would be backwards to the other panels. Uh, everything is keyed, all these panels slot into each other, so top and bottom as well. So that's why you can't take a panel and turn it 180 degrees, it will not line up with anything. Um, the other big thing is you're probably wondering what this floor is. The Almost Heaven kits do not come with floors. Now you can buy a wood floor for your kit, but it still sits on top of your existing floor. Originally, since this is an unfinished part of the basement, I was just going to leave bare concrete. I wasn't going to put a sealer or anything. Um, but with the price of this LVP, I figured I might as well give it a shot. So. I went into my hardware store, I got some underlayment, and I got a couple boxes of this LVP. Um, this is a, I want to say, I want to say these are six feet this way, and then this way, like, five and a half feet I'm not I can't remember it's been a bit um, it, because each piece is like three feet long so uh, I went ahead and I laid this floor down on top of the underlayment that I bought and uh, and then this cheap basement carpeting I took my knife and and I cut it out to match so there's a nice smooth you know relatively smooth transition between the floors and there's no lip here. You can't feel any difference here, which is convenient. And this has worked out for me. So LVP is uh, waterproof. Uh, it doesn't mean you should be dumping buckets of water on top of it, but it is a watertight flooring. So uh, the underlayment is simply to allow it to breathe if some moisture does happen to travel through it. And so it'll breathe and uh, 
not go bad, I guess. I'm not a flooring expert, I'm an electrician. Um, and this actually turned out quite nice. It feels good on the feet, uh, it, it doesn't get cold, and I've been using this sauna for about three months and it looks the exact same it did when I installed it. So if you're looking for a cheap flooring idea, I would try LVP. Uh, if not, you can buy the Almost Heaven wooden floor, and I'm sure that's great too. Let's go through some other things on the construction. <clears throat> um, let's see here. First of all, these benches, let me move this bucket. These benches are held in by three screws from the factory. Uh, I went ahead and added two more per side on these, uh, whatever this is, two by two. Um, I believe the factory ones were here, here, and back here, and I shot a couple more deck screws on each side. I don't know if it was necessary, but being that I work in construction, I'm very anal about things being very secure and very well built so i went ahead and shot some extra screws in for for good measure i mean it's 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 four screws for that peace of mind so and i've never had any issues same thing with this lower bench the rail that it slides on i beefed it up a little bit that back down the other thing i did is up here uh, there's screws that go in that hold these roof support two by twos and these serve two purposes the first is these panels will rest on top of it uh, they're not actually screwed to it but but the roof will just sit here uh, the second thing is you'll notice that they actually tie these panels together because this is a, a seam between two panels uh, so what I did is I added some extra screws in that because you're going to lean against it. Uh, you might fall back against this wall. And so I want these walls to not buckle out at these seams. Um, again, it's not in the instructions to do that. They do have screws in them, but I added more. So, and, and again, it seems very sturdy and I've not had any issues with it. And then the other thing I did is the heater instructions tell you to only put uh, these top screws in and it's keyed. So you slide, you shoot these two screws in halfway you you push the heater over it and then it drops down and then you shoot two more well i put as many as i could because they give you a lot of holes and that heater is very secure again not necessary and it doesn't say to do that but i do construction for a living and so i just think about this stuff maybe a little different all in all, this kit cost me about $3,400, including the kit, the electrical, and then some other little knickknacks that I added in. Um, I can't say that you could ever spend your money any more efficiently because this unit works flawlessly. Uh, it hasn't caused my house any issues as far as moisture. Uh, the electric seems to be fairly cheap. I'm here in the Midwest and I've calculated it out to be about $1 per hour of heater time. So uh, if you're sitting in the sauna for an hour, hour and a half, maybe twice a week, I'm talking three bucks a week for this experience. I mean, it, it's really cheap. I've been doing it for a few months now and I haven't really noticed my electrical bills spike up like I thought it would. Summer's around the corner, so 
Uh, only time will tell if, if that changes and the rates go up. But as for now, here in April, it seems to be a pretty cheap operation. Um, and as far as the looks, I mean, it, it's pretty good for a kit. I mean, I'm sure you could build one into your house and have it look better, but the way I framed this room out and kind of tucked it into its own cavity, uh, it just looks good and, and it has a good fit and finish. And uh, I can say that Almost Heaven has been a very helpful company for customer service, for questions. Uh, anytime I had a, a detail I was trying to work out, they were quick to email back. And uh, they also sent me some promotional items for uh, posting a good review. I can't recommend them enough. Almost Heaven and then Harvia, the brand of the heater. Harvia is a well-known big name in the sauna heater industry. So I have good faith that this unit will last a long time. Uh, this is the Almost Heaven Sutton. And uh, if you guys have any questions, just go ahead and drop a comment and I'll see if I can get to you and, and help you out. Thanks for watching.